Hi guys, my name's Catherine. I'm one of the tutors here at Chegg. I tutor science, uh, some math, English, and Spanish. And today we're going to be talking about qualitative and quantitative traits, which is a biology topic. And most of how we're going to be talking about it has to do with genetics, which is where it's usually used, but you'll see that it's pretty easily transferable to other areas of bio if you need it for that as well. So a good example of a qualitative trait is flower color. So is the flower blue or is it purple or red or I don't know, green, pink? Uh, the point being that they're just yes or no categories. Uh, whereas a quantitative trait is something that's more on a scale. Uh, you can't say, is he tall? Yes or no? And then no, like everything about that height is more on a scale. Is he five foot one, five foot one and a half, five foot one and three quarters, five foot two, and even between there, there's obviously you can go even smaller amounts than that. Um, and so it's on a scale. As you might have guessed, qualitative traits are usually um, encoded by just one or two or at least a really small number of genes. And then quantitative traits tend to be coded by a larger number of genes, up to 100 genes, actually, because it's such a broader spectrum and it's such a more nuanced phenotype. A phenotype is uh, the way that a gene shows up. For example, you might have the a genotype uh, would be something like if two little a genes coded for red hair and then the phenotype is having red hair. So when I say phenotype, it just means like the physical showing of a gene versus the genotype, which is the code for it. So anyways, height or any other type of quantitative trait is a really nuanced phenotype. And because of that, there are a lot of other genes that have to code for like more genes than for a qualitative trait. Uh, let's see here. A lot of the classical Mendelian traits also fit under what's called qualitative. So Gregor Mendel was one of the first geneticists. Some call, people call him the father of genetics. And he was a Catholic monk who noticed that his pea plants would grow in interesting ways based on what um, they were the offspring of. And he did a lot of experiments. But because he didn't have a lot of scientific tools, a lot of the traits that he was discovering were relatively simple. Is the pea wrinkled? Yes or no. Is it yellow or is it green? Uh, does the pea plant have flowers? Yes or no. Are the flowers pink or white or I think purple? Um, pretty simplistic or pretty discreet things like that. I think he also talked about stock height of the plants and that would have been a quantitative trait, but most of his traits were qualitative. Uh, qualitative traits are also pretty much set in stone. So if you have a flower that is purple, pretty much no matter what happens to it in its environment, it will stay purple. Or if it's blue, it will stay blue. Qual uh, quantitative traits aren't like that. The environment can make a big difference on them. Uh, for example, if a person is born with the heights to be uh, the genes rather to be like five nine, for example, and then they don't get good nutrition as a kid, they may be significantly shorter than that. Or if they get very good nutrition uh, and maybe play sports and practice good posture and all these different things, they might end up being a little bit taller than that. So it's it is dependent on the environment. Um, when you're analyzing qualitative traits, you can use counts and ratios. So for example, with the flower example that we talked about before, you count out all of the blue flowers, all of the purple flowers, all of the pink flowers, or whatever other color you have, and then you can make a ratio and say, for example, um, the ratio of white to blue to purple flowers is one to two to one. So for every one blue flower, we have two purple flowers and one uh, pink flower um, or something like that. And that would be a classic Mendelian ratio, which is a topic for another video. But 
the, the point being that you can count it up and say, yes, this is the ratio, this is the number, the percentage of flowers that are blue, etc. With quantitative traits, it's a lot harder than that. For things like height, you have to do statistical analyses to find things like the mean, which is the average height uh, among a group of people, and then the standard deviation, which is a measure of how much, uh, essentially, how much variation there is in the group of people. For example, if you have a group of people where the first one's 5'8", and the next 5'9", 5'10", 5'8", 5'8", 5'10", 5'9", uh, just like that, that's a group with a really small uh, standard deviation compared to if your other group is 5'2", 6'2", 5'8", 5'4", 6'1", that's a lot more variation. So by looking at the standard deviation and the mean, you can have an idea of what the average height is. Um, you can figure out what genes might be dominant, which um, is another way of saying that they trump other genes uh, or other, I guess, other copies of the same gene to show their phenotype, their physical manifestation, uh, which ones are recessive, uh, what's more common in the gene pool, what's like what more people have in their own DNA. And it's a more nuanced thing. It's a little bit more complicated than doing a test for a qualitative trait, especially because quantitative traits, like I said, are also complicated by the environment. So you can't be sure that what you're looking at is just about genes. And so that pretty much sums it up for qualitative versus quantitative traits. If you enjoyed learning together and want to seek me out on check, I would really appreciate that.